to make this look like a rubbery thing. Oh, now the sketch is messing with us, so we'll deselect it and we will select the edges and click F. Now when you see we rounded here, now Fusion understands that we want to connect it the entire way. If there was a sharp edge, it would not select the whole edge here. So let's see... We want to make this almost completely round. One, that's... yeah, that's enough. That's enough. Now, we want one more. One, at least one more. So, what we'll do is we, we'll click this surface and create another sketch. And this time we want this to be a, a little bit smaller. So what we can see is that we had the square out here. We had the rectangle all the way out here the last time. So we will make it a little bit smaller this time. And one millimeter smaller. Now that we have both a vertical and a horizontal line, now Fusion uh, snaps here, down here, for some reason. And we'll make the inner one and the, in the same place as the old one. We will click Extrude. I will not extrude this. Uh, you you could actually ch uh, select or oh, we will do that. We'll do that. We'll click these as well. So we'll have the the inner the inner rounded part already sorted. And let's extend this also three millimeter. But now I did something wrong. I did. I was too quick. I want to make this a new body first. And the reason for that is I want to round this edge, and I cannot do that if it's joined. That will uh, that will make it wrong. Uh, I'll show you what happens if it's joined, and I click here. You can see that it's uh, it's not selecting the whole way. And if I do with Command and I click F, Fusion thinks I want to to ex uh, make it round outside here. It cannot even do that now. You can see that it makes it really, really crazy here. So let's go back and make it a new component, in a new body instead. Now you can see that I can actually make it round. But first we need to round off these outer edges here. So click F. And we can click the front view because we want the same. We want it. We want it to look the same as the other one. So there we go. Seven looked okay. So let's select the edges there and click F. And uh, I think we had one on the other one. Let's choose let's choose some other values here so so that it looks a bit different. And that looks like something. I think these these edges down here usually are sharp. I'm not sure, but I, I think they are. I think they're just left open. Let's just leave them there. Uh, you can trim them if you want to. It's just to before you make these rounded edges. I can show you. You can you can draw. You can pull the history back, and you can select this line, for example. Click F, and you can round it. And now when I click OK, and I extend, you can see that they were not selected. These new ones were not selected. So we can. 
we can uh, double click on the on the round and we can choose these new lines here and you can see it, it rounds it all off but um, I don't want that on this one I think it looks better if they're just uh, if they're just left sharp down here so we'll, we'll leave it like this now these are two different bodies and uh, we can print these these ones laying down so we, we will uh, combine them And we can just print them and glue them on, and it will make this the the end of the uh, of the car make it uh, look a little bit re more realistic. So let's activate the whole thing and see how it looks. Yeah, that looks better. And also, we want to select the color. We want it to be black. Yeah, it's the same. There we go. And uh, now we can we cannot use mirror to to uh, put another one on the other side. And the reason for that is that our our center point of this uh, of this uh, project is not in the middle of the of the car. If you really want it to be, you can you can think of that when you're placing the boogies that you actually get the, the center in the in the in the actual middle. But uh, I, I don't think it's really important. Uh, you don't need to do that. It's not it's not critical in any way. If you're not if you don't intend to mirror things uh, along the uh, the length, it's usually it's usually more a case of mirroring uh, along the uh, along the length than. Uh, to either edge. So let's just copy this one and paste paste one and then we can grab one of these wheels and we rotate it 180 degrees and we just move it over here. It's again just for visual reference so it's not it's not important that it's it's super exact or anything. It's just uh, we want to see how it looks. There we go. There. It starts to look like something. So what's next? Um, we want to create uh, the roof. But first I think we want this window here in the in the end. So let's uh, let's activate the body. And what we can do now, we can actually use the sketch we did, where we have this window, and we can select the surface, we create a new sketch, we use these dimensions, and sorry about that, I was too fast. I click extrude and then I choose oh not that one that one and I just draw it all the way. There's no components in the middle so we can check that here to be sure. So there we go. Now we have the window in the end there. I'll not make a door there now because it will be it will be partially hidden by this uh, battle or which what we should call it so um, there we go so let's make the roof so we make a new component let's call it roof and uh, let's take a look at the picture if, if we can find it again yeah here it is here it is it also has some some features to it along the uh, is yeah perpendicular to the length. So let's try to do something like that. 
Now we don't have a picture from the side here, so we don't actually know how this, uh, how the shape of this roof is. So we're gonna have to improvise a bit. So what I will do now is I could see on the picture that the roof starts and ends flush, almost flush at least with the, with the body. So that makes it a lot easier because we can just uh, we can just click the edge here and use that as a reference point when we create a new sketch for the roof. So now let's just freeform a bit. We click uh, um, fit point spline and we start at the edge and let's create some points here and uh, yeah we'll put it there. And I just move them around a bit until it looks looks basically one uh, like I want it to. Uh, we could actually light up the canvas again to think to see a little bit how high the roof it should be. Yeah, it should be higher actually. Uh, what I can do is uh, if I want to show the canvas at the same time as the sketch, I can click on this side. So I'm I'm looking both at the at uh, the sketch and the canvas, and I can just draw this, take this up to where the roof is. Now I can continue to work with the sketch. That was quite a high roof, actually. So, yeah, let's make it something like that. As you can see, I'm only working on on uh, half the roof at the time now because I will mirror it. Yeah, that looks that looks that looks good. So let's let's make it like that. So. Uh, So I will click the arrow and the arrow and I will click the other end of the body. So Fusion knows how long I want to make it. So now let's see if we want to make these um these um, lines or what we should call them in the roof. We'll, we'll do that before we mirror this part. So how should we do that? Um, we will try to we will we'll try to make a, to make a pattern here as well. So let's first try to remove re to remove a bit of this part and uh, also make it a pattern. And we'll see if that works. It's, I'm not sure if it will. We'll try. So we we create a sketch on the end. And we cr we click on this line and we create an offset. So now let's see how how deep we want to make this groove. Um, we could call it a groove. Uh, so let's make it 0 0.2 millimeters. We cannot yet click the surface, so we will we will need to close it so that Fusion understands that this is a geometry. Now I think we could, yeah, now we can click it. Again, I'm too, a bit too fast. I click extrude and then I click this area that we created. And um, now what we want to do is we want to, well, let's make it two millimeter wide. And I don't want it from the edge. I want it to, to be a bit inside. so. Let's make it with an offset. That's wrong. It's a minus offset. Oh, that was too far in. Let's see if one millimeter in is good. No, let's try two. Yeah, that's that's good. Let's place it there. Let's see also that we're not cutting anything we don't want to cut. That's good. But 
but we can actually see here that there's a there's a small part here left. We don't want that. That will be an that will be an error. It can cause some problem when we when we try to print this later on. So for some reason there's actually material here. This is actually really strange. Uh, or no, it's not. You can see that the offset the offset line it doesn't go all the way out to the edge. So it wasn't it wasn't strange at all. So what we'll do here is we'll click L for line and uh, we'll pull it out here a bit further. And we'll take it up here. There we go. Now it'll stop sketch because I still have my extrude here. I will just have to double click it again and see if it shows the. Oh, it didn't choose the whole area. Now we should not have this weird small surface there. Yeah, it's it's gone. It's gone. It should be gone. That's good. Um, so I think we'll we'll leave it we'll leave it like that. We'll try to make a we'll try to make a pattern now. We'll probably th get the same weird error as the last time, but we'll try anyway. No, so now for some weird reason we did not get the error. I don't understand why. We're still using a feature and we're still using a line, so I have no idea why it allows us to do this and not and not the other. So all the way there is 270, and uh, I want it to be two millimeter in. So two hundred and sixty-eight to be exact, and uh, let's see how many we can put in there. Now it, this will be really tough for the for the computer if you have an old old shitty laptop like I have. So let's bear with it. You can just keep increasing these until you get the number you want to and the, the density you want. It's not a super complex geometry, so it shouldn't be that hard. Too many pattern instances. Consider using optimized identical compute options. Uh, I have no idea what it means, but... <laughs> um, funny thing is that it doesn't... Uh, it allows us to continue anyway. Uh, let's see what happens if we click OK now. Yeah, it works. So I have no idea why it was complaining. So now we can mirror this uh, this body. So let's click mirror and we select the body and oh it's it has components uh, presets we want we want to mirror the body not the component otherwise we cannot join them There we go And let's join them together
So there we have it. So let's uh, let's activate the whole thing and see how it looks. And uh, let's remove the let's uh, just unclick the canvas so that we can look at the whole thing. We still have this sketch here. And this is a uh, this is also a small tip here. If you see some lines that you that you want to get rid of from the view, you can just you can click actually click the line and you can see that it highlights the components where that line actually is. And you can see where the sketch is. If you have a if you have a really big assembly, that it can be really hard to find actually the sketch that is uh, highlighted. Might sound weird because you should see where it is on which component, but it's it's not it's not always that easy. Uh, we can see if we want to try some other color on the roof, and you can see also that we don't have a perspective now. We have a uh, we have a orthographic view, and that uh, that means that that we have a that we have a view that is not distorted. You can see that it's perfectly uh, it's a, yeah. What should we call it? Perfectly in lines. When we work with dimensions and sketches and things, we want that. But uh, w if we want to look at it, we can click perspective, and that will uh, that will make it look a lot more real. And we get a feel for how this will look in the end. We can try now to uh, choose a different color for the roof just to see how it looks. Glossy gray. Let's see. Oh, that's boring. Matte gray. Yeah, maybe. There are some textured ones as well. I, I I usually don't use them, but you can of course experiment a lot with different colors here. Let's uh, let's try black roof, just to see. That's, that actually looks quite well in my in my view. Uh, but the original is gray, so let's keep it gray. And there are some small details on the roof that we could do to make it look a little bit more realistic. So let's look at the picture. And now here it is. There are something here. I don't know if it's ventilation or what it could be. Uh, Let's just add something, so you see how you could do it. Let's just let's just add some small boxes or something. Uh, we'll select the roof. We activate the roof, so we know we want to work with the roof. Uh, and what we do now, we select the the lower surface because everything else here is rounded so we cannot select it to create a sketch so let's create a sketch on the on the lower part and now when we click create a new sketch fusion will try to uh, it will position it upside down and we don't want that so we turn it around and let's say or yeah box we'll, we'll create a circle let's see 10 millimeters And uh, we extrude that. So I click E and or the button, and I choose this one. And now Fusion thinks we want to ext extrude it downwards, but we don't want that. We want to extrude it upwards through the roof. But we actually want to want to integrate it into the roof. We don't want to cut, so we just join. And that's a bit too high. We want this to look some like some kind of ventilation thing. There we go. 
the reason I'm, I'm making this round is not only for visual looks it's because I intend to print this roof on the side and I'll show you why and if I make this round it will be a lot easier it will not require support otherwise it would require support and uh, so let's see yeah, that looks looks okay so now we if we don't want to make a lot of them we can just enter the same sketch again now let's see how far we placed it uh, this error message is just to tell you that the sketch is already constrained fusion thinks we want to put it on this line and but we still want to want to dimension so let's click OK this just means with a parenthesis here that we cannot change this value 37 and a half so if I place you can see all these when you have the triangle there fusion is telling you that uh, you're placing whatever you're you're trying to do you're placing it on something on a reference we can re we can remove everything that we're not working with right now so we don't get any weird references here we can actually we can actually even hide the roof itself let's hide the roof and uh, and the bogies as well we want to 10 in diameter and I click D for dimension and we want to 37 and a half so there we have two of them operation cancelled I have no idea why it says that but uh, yep so let's light up the roof again and uh, we need to enter our extrude again and select the, the other one there there you go now we have two I'll leave it like that for now. You can of course make more of them if you want to, but now you now you know how to do it. So So I think I think we're we're done with most of it. Like let's let's uh, create some more details on the on the lower part of the chassis because it's a little bit empty down here. <coughs> 